The Sleeping Dictionary is a novel about a young woman who, uh, as a 10-year-old girl in 1930s India, loses her whole family and village in a cyclone. And after that, she has to make her way independently through India. And this is during the end of the British Raj period. And she winds up as a servant in a girl's boarding school. And she learns English at this place. Um, and after that, she has some unfortunate circumstances that send her out into the world again. The novel is a story of how she makes her way through this society, which is so hard for a young woman, and attains personal happiness and begins to become part of the Indian freedom fighting movement. In the old days, when the European colonials came to Asia, they often called the young women who, who lived with them and taught them the languages of the country their sleeping dictionaries. And as the reader continues in the story, you find that um, Maybe not just women are sleeping dictionaries. Maybe men can be di sleeping dictionaries, too. I chose Calcutta um, pre-war. My family is from this area, so most of my experiences visiting India have been in Calcutta. And um, it was very easy for me to connect with old friends and relatives to learn more. I put an epigraph at the front of each chapter because part of my research process was reading a lot. And a lot of the Rabindranath Tagore poems that I read spoke to situations that my character was in, whether it was friendship with a, with a girl at school, or the cyclone and its devastation, or the heartache that comes from a failing love affair. So I was drawn to include little snippets, and they're fully accredited to the source. And I also liked including bits of journalism that I found when I was doing my research in libraries in India. And I found that often the things that were in the newspaper never made it to the history books, and that they really told a lot about daily life that might be fun for the readers to know.